How's it going, folks? How's it going? I'm Brother Matthew, and this is Christian Coffee Time. It's uh, been a while since I've uh, done a live here on Instagram. I'm just on here just to, to chat, see what's going on, and uh, um, got a couple things I uh, just want to go over, just to bring up to your mind. If you have any comments, questions, anything else at all you'd like to talk about, hey, bring it up. Let, uh, be glad to hear from you. So yeah, if you got any comments, questions, issues, insights, anything. Um, one thing I want to, to talk about is something I hear from time to time. I'm not sure what in the world, <laughs> where people are getting it from. It, it's kind of funny. It's been well more than once on uh, my different posts of people talking about elitist reptilian Anunnaki whatever. I don't know what in the world that's supposed to be, where they get that from. There's no such thing as reptilians and all that kind of thing. Um, big fan of rocks up post. Hey, God bless you. Thank you so much. Um, it, it, because when we read the word of God, it, it's clear uh, we know what there is and what there isn't. We see there's heaven and hell. We see God and the angels. We see Satan and the devils. Uh, and then us. So, there are no reptilian things. That's just crazy conspiracy, conspiracy theorists who've been watching way too much sci-fi. That's my opinion on that. There's no lizard people, reptilian people. That's a, actually a, a, an offshoot branch as well from the satanic teachings of William Branham. Uh, he called himself a prophet and he believed in what's, what's called the serpent seed theory. The serpent seed doctrine, where Adam and Eve did not sin by eating of the forbidden fruit, like the Bible flat out says. Rather, William Branham says that sin came into the world because Eve had sexual relations with the serpent. Yet, yeah, that never happened. And that Cain was uh, was the offspring of the, uh, of the snake and Eve union. Uh, no, read uh, Genesis, it flat out says that, that, that uh, Cain uh, was born from Adam and Eve, and that Eve even says, I've gotten a man from the Lord. So the Bible even says that Cain came from Adam and Eve, not from Eve and the serpent. So anyways, this crazy teaching has brought forth this serpent lizard people theory thing. Um, no, there's no such thing as reptilians. There's no such thing as the Anunnaki. That's just... Ancient cultures, crazy myths and lore and, and stories that people are picking up and believing is true. That's the same logic as, let's say, I don't know, a thousand years from now, someone goes digging in an area and digs up a Dr. Seuss book and then sees all the crazy creatures in the Dr. Seuss book, says, oh, look, there's this. And people start believing that those are real creatures. It's the same logic. You you grab the ancient Dr. Seuss tablets and you're believing that the crazy drawings and writings and the crazy tablets is real. Like, come on. <laughs> but what's crazier is that Christians are believing that nonsense and are trying to mesh it into the Bible. And it's just, it's not true. Anyways, if you have any other uh, comments, questions, issues, insights, anything else at all, please bring it up. Be glad to hear from you. So anyways, yes, so the uh, Anunnaki reptilian thing, elitist reptilian thing, that's not true. It's that there are crazy people who are cold-blooded, I'll grant you that. There are some crazy cold-blooded people, but they're not lizards uh, wearing skin suits. You've been watching way too much Men in Black. You know, we got Edgar, uh, <laughs> the... the, the, the uh, the, the alien insectoid who puts on Ed, Edgar's skin suit, you know, sugar, give me sugar. That's, you're believing this is real. This is what you're doing. So you might want to go and rethink reality. Go read the Bible for once and stop watching Men in Black. So anyways, uh, the other thing I want to mention as well is uh, there, there's a lot of people who think, now bear with me. <clears throat> excuse me, um, that the vaccine, the needle, whatever, the fauci Ouchie, is the mark of the beast. N no. No, it's not. I am not advocating the shot. I'm just saying it's not the mark of the beast. Because when we read the Bible, it says it's his name or the number of his name. And it's in the forehead or right hand. Uh, are they giving you the shot in your forehead? Are they giving you the shot in your right hand? 
No. Are they jabbing it in you to kind of punch in the name or the number of the of the guy's name? No. Um, it's his name or the number of his name, and it's called the mark of. Now, mark means an etching in the flesh, which means scarification, tattooing, or branding when you do a study in the Koine Greek. Uh, scarification, tattooing, or branding. Um, that They're not doing that with the needle. Um, and uh, uh, also, we see that... Uh, just a couple chapters previously, we see the, that the Lord seals his servants, the 144,000 uh, that are his servants, with the mark of God. That God takes the, the, the seal of God, the mark of God, and he marks his servants. Um, and uh, then a couple chapters later, the devil's like, ooh, I want that too. So he brings in his mark. Now, what it is, is the sigil. It's the seal. You know, like the presidential seal of the United States, the presidential seal. This is the presidential seal of the antichrist done up in a seal form of his name or the number of his name done up in a, in an image and that is then stamped etched a scarification tattooing or branding could also be laser etched that would still be an etching in the flesh uh, of his name or the number of his name in your forehead or your right hand so therefore given biblical doctrine the specifics of scripture the the needle is not the mark of the beast so anyways i'm just just saying see this is why it's so important for biblical specifics when you see okay what does the bible say because there's going to be an innumerable how do you say that word innumerable i can't say certain words. I'm dyslexic. Innumerable amount of other opinions and conspiracy theories and feelings and stuff out there. And tons of people saying all kinds of stuff. You know, the alien Anunnaki reptilian people are going to come down and they're going to do stuff to you with needles. No. Okay. No. You, you're again watching way too much Star Trek. Now, what does the Bible flat out say? What does Scripture flat out say? And as you see in, in 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 20 and 21, it's not open to personal interpretation. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation. So what it says is what it means. We go by Scripture. What does the Bible say? You can have all the opinions and feelings that you want. You're allowed your personal opinions, but... The moment it contradicts the word of God, you're wrong, no matter what you feel about it. Well, I have my truth, you have your truth. And, okay, your truth is not fact, and facts don't care about your feelings. The only fact is the word of God. Now, again, it, I would say investigate everything, and of course, check things out and, and pray about it. Uh, but again, I'm just saying, the needle is not the mark of the beast, so you can... Calm down, cool your jets if you're thinking that now you're damned to hell because you got a needle. Um, no, needles aren't salvationary. Just saying. If you have any other comments, questions, issues, insights, please go ahead, ask away. Now, I also want to bring up uh, just a mention. Um, some people have been asking about uh, my other account here on Instagram that, that I've been uh, letting you folks know about. Um it's called Buzzed and Bearded, you know, Buzzed and Bearded, uh, where I show you some some of my favorite things, uh, some funny stuff uh, that, I, that I think and like to put up, and also some of my expeditions. Me and uh, some others, we go and do some urbex discoveries. Now, urban exploration is where you go and you find uh, interesting areas, ruins, abandoned buildings, and you go and search them out. And uh, we take our cameras and whatnot and uh, some uh, video cameras and we uh, capture our, our excursion going through these abandoned buildings. It, it's really interesting. People are like, why in the world did you do it at night? Because it's fun. And it's also different. You get It's an entirely different world of photography and videography as well. Um, it's a big skill comes in. You got to watch the shadows and the lighting and get all stuff. And it's just, it's an entirely different form of photography and videography. And there's no one else around as well when it's a little darker and it's, um, and you get to see stuff better. It's, it, it's just, it's a lot of fun. Um, and so, yeah, so when we do this, uh, of course, absolutely, we do not break into anything. If the door is locked, we leave it locked. We don't force anything. We don't break anything. We don't take anything. We don't change anything. Um, only if it's fully uh, accessible easily will we will we search it out. 
Um, but yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. There's there's danger to it because you got an possible animals, uh, you got possible squatters, also possible structure damage. So there's a lot of things to take into mind. I highly recommend you do not try this on your own until you've searched it out, researched it, and you know what you're doing, and all of that. You got to be very very careful because there's a lot of dangers that go with it. Now. It's a lot of fun, and of course, if you if you're well uh, uh, researched up on it and you know what you're doing, have fun with it, but go very carefully. And I would strongly recommend never go by yourself, never ever go by yourself, because if you get hurt or something happens, you're all alone. So it's go in two or threes, <laughs> and uh, and have fun with that. Now. Again, there's a lot of stuff that could be found. Uh, there have been some weird things that have happened. Um, of course, you know where where there's uh, where, where there's things like this that the, the enemy will try to do certain stuff, and of course it happens. You just rebuke it and just keep going. We go there for for the for the structure. We go there for the building. We don't. We're not ghost hunting or any of that kind of thing. Uh, ghosts are demons, anyways. Uh, but. Uh, but yeah, it's a lot of fun. We like the videography, the photography, and just uh, re researching ancient, uh, ancient old stuff. Like the one I put up pictures, we plan on going back getting better ones. Uh, I linked uh, the other guy I go with, uh, Abandoned Knight. I, I linked his account in some of my posts. You go check him out. He has a better camera than I do. The one night we went to ruins of an old castle. He got better photos than I did because my camera, for some reason, just was not picking up the light enough for for the photos. But he got some good ones, so check out his as well, Abandoned Night. And uh, yeah, so there you go. I'm just gonna see the comments here. Someone said something. One second. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. Okay. Uh, convictions through the spirit is essential rather than subjective opinions. Correct, but if I may tweak your comment there, convictions through the Word of God. Because how does the Spirit of God convict us? See, this is the thing. How does the Spirit of God convict us with just uh, thoughts and things in our own mind and heart? No, 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 no. The Spirit of God instructs us through the Word of God. God will not add new things. He will not tell you things that are not already found in the Word of God. The Spirit of God teaches you, instructs you from the Word of God, from the Scriptures. So if you do not know the Scriptures, how will you be instructed by God? you got to know what this says. you got to get your nose in the book. Memorization of Scripture and uh, understanding of the doctrines and theologies of Scripture, and the Spirit of God will bring them up and teach you and help you to understand. Now, similarly, like, for example, we just uh, talked about previously about the Mark of the Beast thing. Um People have all different opinions and feelings, and they say, well, the Spirit of the Lord told me this. Well, how do you know it was the Spirit of God? I'm just saying, I'm just saying, because, you know, Satan can quote Scripture too. You look at, you look at Matthew chapter 4, the temptation in the wilderness, Satan quoted Psalm 91. The devil is not averse to using the Word of God. He'll pull it out of context and twist it and cherry pick it. But how will you know if it's the Spirit of God or a false spirit that's trying to tell you something? You got to know the specifics of the Word of God. Acts 17, 11, like the Bereans, you got to search it out, search out the scriptures to see if these things are so. How do you test the spirits? By the Word of God. You see if they contradict the Word of God. So you got to know scripture. So convictions must be by scripture and scripture alone, not by opinions, feelings, experiences, visions, dreams. All of that's irrelevant. It's all utterly irrelevant. This is the only thing that's relevant, the Word of God. So you got to know Scripture. So the Spirit of God convicts us by the Word of God. Now, in this as well, I just wanted to bring up something else just to think about. Now, people, so there are so many people who have trouble trying to understand Hebrews chapter 6, verses 4 to 6. Hebrews chapter 6, verses 4 to 6. And there's so many people out there that try to use this passage as a proof that you can lose your salvation or whatnot. But what does the Word of God actually say? If we go by the specific words, look what it says. Uh, Hebrews 6 verses 4 to 6. For it is impossible for those who are once enlightened. 
I, can I just ask you a quick question, folks, in the comments there? Can you tell me, is enlightenment salvation? Is enlightenment salvation? Is it? What, what is enlightenment? Is enlightenment salvation? What do you think? Because enlightenment would seem to indicate intellectualism, understanding, grasping of the mind. Enlightenment is not salvation. It is, it is, however, an understanding that is brought upon you. How? The Spirit of God would be convicting you, instructing you, teaching you, showing you, giving you the glimpse of. Right. For it is impossible for those who are once enlightened and have tasted, tasted, not eaten, tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost. What would that be? conviction by the spirit of god he comes upon you convicts you shows you the cross shows you your sin shows you what you need to do your, the work of the holy ghost to partake of the holy ghost and have tasted the good word of god and the powers of the world to come if they shall follow they the enlightened hebrews 6 4 to 6 does not say you can lose your salvation it says you can resist the holy spirits working upon you to draw you to salvation so you're resisting the grace of so right there, Hebrews 6, 4 to 6, which is paired with 10, 26. Hebrews 10, 26 is literally a repeat of 6, 46. They go together. So Hebrews 6, 46, Hebrews 10, 26 is illustrating and showing you how some can reject salvation. They can reject this, the, the working of the Spirit of God. So no, it's not saying you can lose your salvation. Now, if we see here that if, that in Christ there's neither Jew nor Gentile, neither bond nor free, neither male nor female, all are one in Christ. That all scriptures get given for all people. It doesn't matter who or what you are. And that uh, the book of Hebrews and all the rest of it is meant for us uh, as well. It's meant for anyone to learn from, to glean from. And it's talking about salvation. And Hebrews is written, yes, is written uh, as an interpretation to the Jews, application to anyone, for those who are trying to hold themselves to law. We're trying to hold themselves to law keeping and all that kind of thing. Um, on our on our YouTube channel, we have an entire series that we're putting together by Pastor Paul. He's doing a walkthrough of the book of Hebrews, and he shows you what it's all about. It's excellent study. I highly recommend you check that out. You want to pair Hebrews with the book of Galatians because it's, it's talking about the same thing as well, and that we can learn from it as well. One more thing I want to talk about, uh, and I hope that you understand now. There's a lot of people also have a lot of weird views when it comes to the Word of God and different types of creatures and whatnot and, and such. So what I want to do is I want to take you back to Genesis, Genesis chapter 6. Now, there's a lot of people out there who have some weird, twisted, wacky view regarding the Nephilim. Now, regardless of what you may think about this, who and what are the Nephilim? And yes, there's a lot of people who believe that the uh, fallen angels came down and mated with women and created these half half breed demon human hybrid monster thingies or whatever. Um, that's not what the Bible says. It's not when you when you walk through Genesis chapter six and you take a look at what it's saying, you go word by word, verse by verse, doctrine by doctrine. You'll see that Genesis six says utterly nothing about that. That, that never happened. So what I challenge you is to grab your Bible and follow along with me as I walk you through just a couple verses in Genesis chapter 6, and I'll show you what it says. So grab your Bible, Genesis chapter 6, and we're going to go from verses 1 to... Um, Verses 1 to 5. We'll go down to verses 1 to 5 in Genesis chapter 6. I'm just going to show you what it says. I'm going to walk you through it, and you be the judge of what it says here, okay? Genesis chapter 6, verse 1. And it came to pass. Okay, hold up. Came to pass. Okay, time time is going on. Okay, when men began to multiply in the face of the earth. Okay, so population explosion. People are spreading across the earth. Okay, when men began to multiply in the face of the earth, the daughters are born unto them. Okay, when they see procreation and people spreading and marriage and all this. Okay, so this is going on. The while this is going on, verse 2, that the sons of God, hold up, nowhere. Nowhere 
in the entirety of the word of God, from Genesis to Revelation, nowhere are fallen angels, demons, devils ever called sons of God. They're called the enemies of God, evil beasts, foul beasts, liars, murderers, all the rest of the, 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 the wicked ones. They are never called sons of God. Some people say, wait, hold up. What about in the book of Job? A time came when the sons of God presented themselves unto the Lord that Satan came. That Satan came. He's not called a son of God. He's, he's not called a servant of God. He's called Satan, the evil one, the accuser, the brethren, the foul one, the enemy of God. He wasn't supposed to be there. He came along when he wasn't invited. He's not called the sons of God. That the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair. Okay, hold up. The other thing, too, if you, if you do Hebrew studies, get Old Testament Hebrew, New Testament Greek. In Genesis chapter 6, verse 2, Genesis chapter 6, verse 2, in the original Hebrew, the word fair, it says, when the daughters of men uh, saw the daughters of men, they were fair. The word fair means righteous goodness, not beauty. Mm. It means righteous goodness, not beauty. So the Sons of God saw, saw righteous, good women, righteous women, that they took them wives of all which they chose. Hold up. Here's the other thing just to consider. Spirit beings, angels, devils, cannot procreate. They can't create life. Psalms 139, 13 to 16, God creates life in the womb, no one else. And Jesus even says in the Gospels that, uh, that when, we, when we die, we become as the angels who neither marry nor are given a marriage, that they don't procreate. They don't marry, they don't procreate, they don't have power over life and death. They can't create life. They can't create life. So, all right, there's another problem. So angels and fallen angels can't create life, don't procreate. Oh, there's something interesting. Okay, so the sons of God, so that's righteous male servants of God, as no devils are ever called sons of God. So, so sons of God saw the daughters of men, they were fair. The word fair in Hebrew means righteous goodness. Then they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, okay, in the, and while this is going on, verse 3, and the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be in 120 years. Okay, what's he talking about there? That's the introduction to the Noah's flood. It took 120 years to build the ark. Verse 4, that while this is going on, verse 4, there were giants in the earth in those days. Okay, giant in Hebrew is Nephilim. Now the word Nephilim has zero mystic divine connotation. Zero mystic divine connotation. Nephilim just is a word that is given to someone who is abnormally big. You know, like the world championship strongmen power lifters, the guy who pulled trucks and <laughs> and throw planets. You know, those guys, you know, like NBA basketball players, they're abnormally big. Robert Wadlow, Goliath, um, King Saul, head and shoulders above everybody. Someone who's abnormally big. That's zero divine mystic connotation. You know, King Og of Bashan, just abnormally big. There are giants in the earth in those days and also after that. And also after what? Back up verse 3, after the flood. Wait, but hold up, because Genesis 6, 7, 8, 9, when in all the introduction of this, uh, it says that everything that breathed the breath of life perished in the waters except for that which is on the ark. Okay, so question. If only... Noah and his family survived the flood, or if only Noah and his family survived the, the flood, where did the giants come from after the flood? Where did the giants come from after the flood? If only Noah and his family remain. They come from Noah's family. Giantism genetics. Giantism genetics, because it has nothing to do with fallen angels mating with women. That's stupid. That never happened. Read the text. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God, the righteous male servants of God, came in unto the daughters of men, the righteous woman, righteous women of God, and they bare children unto them, which are mighty men, which are of old men of renown. 
So Genesis 6, verses 1 to 5, and then it goes on to talk about how wickedness and all this stuff was all throughout the earth, that God brought in the flood for, for the violence and wickedness and the abominations. Nowhere in all the scriptures does it say anything about fallen angels mating with women, making demon hybrid monster thingies. That never happened. So you see, specifics of scripture is so important, especially in this day and age, and we have so much more going on everywhere this crazy conspiracies crazy doctrines crazy beliefs crazy feelings and all kinds of stuff that's going on fear is just gripping the minds everywhere we need to root ourselves in the word of god not other books and philosophies and commentaries catechisms councils and creeds and other stuff and other beliefs and such the word of god what does scripture say if you don't know scripture what makes you think you can protect yourself what makes you think you can protect your mind since satan since lucifer was able to deceive a third of the angels who stood in the very presence of god what makes you think he can't deceive you and especially what makes you think he can't deceive you if you're not studying the word of god if you're not memorizing scripture if you can wind up believing all kinds of other crazy things because you're not studying the word of God, what makes you think the devil can't warp your mind on something else? So this is why it's so important. So important. Root yourself in scripture. What does the Bible say? It doesn't matter what other people say, think, feel, dream, vision, whatever. Satan uses all kinds of other means to try to get across ideas and thoughts because he can't use scripture perfectly. So he's going to uh, play upon your feelings, your senses, uh, other kinds of stuff. L like a magpie drawn to shiny objects, Satan's going to bring shiny objects to you to try to get your attention. But we got to stay, stay the course, fight the good fight, keep the faith, equip ourselves, be strong in the word of God. What does the Bible say? That's the only thing that matters. So <clears throat> there you go. Any other uh, thoughts, comments, questions, issues, insights, anything else at all? I don't know how much time we have left on this uh, on this live, so we'll, we'll try to answer anything if if there is. Um, let's see. Okay. Nope. There we go. So yeah. So again, please rewatch this and check out our YouTube channel. We got tons of tons of studies over there. Tons of playlists covering many many different topics and doctrines and ideas and thoughts and such. Uh, again, you can find it using hashtag Christian Coffee Time on YouTube. You'll find my channel, Brother Matthew, Christian Coffee Time there, and got tons of playlists. Ever done exorcisms, Brother uh, Stephen S.? Have you ever done exorcisms? Yes, I have, actually. Um, now, many people think that exorcism, you know, like Roman Catholic kind of thing or whatever. No, you, you take your Bible and you beat the person over the head and you scream at the devil and demand its name. No, it's nothing of that. You look at the Bible, what it says... <clears throat> where Paul was being followed by the girl with the spirit of divination. And he, and he says, he grieved in himself and full of the Holy Ghost, turned and rebuked the devil, commanded it to be silent and leave. And it did. It's that simple. Now, it's that simple in that's how it's done, but there there's other things that go along with it. You need to be walking with the Lord and in prayer and fasting and keeping yourself close to the Lord because if you're just a part-time Christian, the devils are just going to laugh at you. They're going to laugh at you. You have no power. You know, Part-time Christians cannot defeat full-time devils. Now, um, yes, absolutely. I've I've personally dealt with demonically possessed individuals. I've dealt with de demonically possessed people, places, and things as hauntings, uh, demons uh, st stomping around, stomping around buildings and whatnot. I've dealt with that. I've dealt with demonically possessed people and demonically uh, possessed uh, um certain activities things have gone on yes i've dealt with a lot of that i've dealt with uh, witches and satanists um it gets quite wild sometimes and uh it's just remembering greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world uh, they obey the name of the most high god they obey jesus christ and when when you when you present them the lord god jesus christ and you present the blood of christ you present the word of god you present it in full faith the devils run they tremble at his name the name that is above all names at whose name every knee will bow and every tongue will swear that jesus christ is lord and that's all you need to remember they don't need to be afraid of them that fear hath torment but perfect love casts out all fear um a question is, should Christians be engaged in watching pop, pop culture? 
Okay, there's a difference between being educated and knowing what's going on and being entertained by it. <clears throat> now, if we take a look what's ha what was happening in Rome and Babylon in the ancient days. Um, you see, uh, should, should the Christians, should the believers back in those days uh, be aware of what's going on? Well, yeah, we even see in Acts, in the book of Acts, uh, we see, for example, where Paul is writing about certain things that the governors or whatever is going on and stuff that's going on. We see how even uh, John the Baptist was aware of Herod uh, taking his brother's wife, um, aware of what's going on in in, uh, in politics and all this stuff. And, and we see the reaction to it. So, yes, absolutely, we should be aware of what's going on. But we should not, it should not be our entertainment. It should not be in our, our entertainment. We have one purpose and one purpose only, that is to serve the Lord. That we are to edify the saints and to guide the lost to Christ. That's our purpose. That's our goal. We are not here to be entertained by the world's nonsense. Who cares about politics in that sense? Who cares about what's what's going on in that way? Rather, I want to present the Lord. And if I can present the Lord to them, if I can help people to understand what truth is by means of comparing it to what's going on in the world. But look what's happening in the governments. Look what's happening in politics. Look, look what's happening in the world. How many prophecies are being fulfilled by it? So I can point people. See, you see what's going on here, 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 and here? This said that that was going to happen. This written thousands of years ago said this would happen. And we show them. It's it's proof text. So there's a big difference between being educated what's going on, being aware, knowledgeable, and being entertained by. So we got to be careful and mindful of how we're looking at it. So there you go. That's what I would say on that. Um, and the same goes for everything else, you know. Uh, our entertainment of movies, TV shows, music, video games, uh, hobbies, interests, work life, home life, private life, and everything that you do, do all to the glory of God. So how can I honor the Lord and glorify Jesus Christ by what I'm observing? Because scripture even says, I was set no wicked thing before mine eyes. So how can I be careful, mindful, by being mindful of Christ in everything that you're doing? Okay, what are you researching? What are you looking up and why are you doing it? What's your purpose? If it's not to glorify Christ and to uh, honor the Lord, if it's not to edify the saints and guide the lost to Christ, then why are you doing it? So there you go. Um, so with that, I think we'll wrap that up there. I think that's uh, sufficient with that. So please, again, check out our YouTube channel. Check out all the stuff over there. We've got tons and tons of stuff. As well, check out our podcasts. We are on multiple different podcast accounts now. We are on Anchor, CastBox, uh, Apple iTunes, and Google Podcasts. we got tons of stuff, and I uh, just put up some more today. We have tons more that we're, that we're getting and we're going to be putting up on podcasts. So you check those out too. So I hope you'll... Uh, visit that and take it take advantage of that um yeah so there we go so with that god bless you folks god bless all those who love our lord god jesus christ god bless all those who love his holy word hope to see you again folks and as always if i don't see you again i'll see you in the sky god bless <laughs>